Joining us now, Emily Hill of Bowersock Capital Partners and Richard Bernstein of Richard Bernstein Advisors. Uh, good to have you both on this afternoon. Richard, I I'm going to start with you today because, yes, we saw some profit taking, particularly in the mega cap tech space, but we have also seen more breath in the market today. Case in point, the Russell finishing, Russell 2000 finishing higher and the Dow finishing higher as well, uh, with most of the sectors in the S&P actually in the green. Is this the start of something meaningful as investors start to look to other parts of the market for the second half of the year? Or is this knee jerk, given the fact that we have had some softer economic data and perhaps there is just this repositioning after strong start to the year? Well, Morgan, it's good to, good to be with you again. Um, I think we should all hope that this market broadens because the fundamentals are broadening. You mentioned the economy, but obviously what's more important to the stock market is corporate profits. And the reality is right now that just in the S&P 500, there's about 160 or 170 companies growing earnings 25 percent or more. So the question that every investor should be asking is what is so unique about the Magnificent Seven, about this narrow leadership, if so many companies are growing. I think what we're starting to see, slowly but surely, is the market starting to appreciate that there is nothing unique about this small set of companies, that profits growth really is revving up, and this is actually quite normal in a period of profits acceleration. Mm. Uh, so, Emily, I mean, I would argue we had slightly more dovish commentary from the likes of Daly and Goolsby today, uh, signaling perhaps that you're seeing more softening in the labor market. And, and, and while they didn't talk specifically to rate cuts and putting those back on the table, uh, did signal that perhaps it's time to start rethinking this process uh, from a Fed point of view as well. If, if you continue to see the softer economic data into the second half of the year and you continue to see the estimates for earnings for U.S. equities move higher in the second half of the year can both coexist? I would expect the Fed to cut rates once. They have been become very adept at signaling what they're going to do. They've said they're going to cut rate once, rates once, and I expect that they will. Inflation data, I think, by the end of the summer especially, is going to continue to surprise positively. And so I think we are actually set up for a very good situation for markets. We just ended a very strong earnings season. The profit recession is over. Yes, economic data is softening slightly, but that's what the Fed wants to see. It's going to enable one, you know, potentially two, but most likely one rate cut in the fall. And I would say overall, the bull market as a result is going to be intact. And I think Chairman Powell has pulled off a soft landing, you know, maybe a hair too soon to declare victory. But, you know, his primary fear was that he would end up with another Arthur Burns, who left the Fed in 1978 amid runaway inflation and his reputation was in tatters. And I think Powell feared that. But that, you know, I think that this has been a very successful Fed. And as a result, I think they're gonna con we're going to continue to see higher momentum and a soft landing. Hmm. OK, R Richard, you I see you noting that junk bonds and large cap stocks have both been outperforming, which is kind of weird. So how much of it do you think is because large caps this time around have been both a safety play and an expression of, of risk appetite? Well, that's an interesting question, John, as to, as to whether they're both. But the relationship between sort of junk stocks, if you will, small cap stocks, and junk bonds goes back decades. I mean, I first learned about this in business school 35 years ago, I'm ashamed to say, but but something like that. And and uh, it's held pretty tight, except for the last couple of years. The last couple of years, you've seen uh, junk bonds do very well. You've seen credit spreads narrow, but you've seen large caps uh, significantly outperform small caps. That is truly unusual. I mean, amazingly unusual. There's many ways you can think about this, right? You could say that the, the large caps are in a bubble and that the junk bond market has it right because profits are improving and and the stock market doesn't appreciate that. You could say the stock market's right and we're heading for one heck of a credit event. I kind of think that's probably not going to happen given that we're not seeing any anything, uh, any problems in the credit markets uh, right now that would lead you to believe we're seeing something of the magna that magnitude. Or you can say that there's a speculative fervor in perhaps both markets, that maybe we're seeing a speculative fervor among large caps and we're seeing a speculative fervor in the junk bond market. Um, that's a possibility. And that maybe unusual parts of the equity market will be safe haven, mm. will be defensive. 
that would be something like small caps or emerging markets. They might say, well, that sounds ridiculous. When are small caps and emerging markets defensive? The answer to that is after the tech bubble.